Have you been reading this type of one? I, I have. I didn't pick up. I haven't picked this one up yet. Um, That's the good one, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, uh, if you don't find it. Hey, man. It's okay. Um, I, I, I have, and I. It was. It was interesting just seeing sort of the the new start and doing everything in San Francisco and all that all that stuff. I it's weird because I I really like the X Men and I uh, there's a weird part of me that like I kind of miss sort of punk rock storm. Like I I don't and I think I may be the only one that misses like storm with the mohawk and then, like I don't know like because I that that's the one thing where I just like I. I think like, uh, yeah, like I, I love I love the X Men characters and I love sort of watching them go through just their own personal sort of dealings with being different, and, you know, and just kind of all those all those all those struggles that they have. And I think for me with Storm especially, it's like she like she sort of embraced being like the goddess and like sort of, and it's just kind of like. I am a goddess, and it's 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 not. Uh, I miss I miss her more. <laughs> I miss you it. can write that in. Why astonishing X Men? It's gonna be she's uh, doing a guest spot in Billy Dee Killiams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that up. Uh, last issue we're gonna talk about my favorite issue of the week: Captain Britain and the MI thirteen, number four. Uh, I can tell by the lack of clapping that nobody's reading this. <laughs> no more scrolls. Yeah. yeah. So good. Every single thing in this issue is so good. First of all, I'm a huge fan of Excalibur from back in the day. This feels very much like it. Uh, like you were saying about the X-Men, this deals with each of the characters individually. Uh, all these characters set in Britain, the scrolls are invading Britain. And in this issue, it de deals with each of them, deals with the uh, thrust of the arc, which is scrolls trying to take magic from Britain, which is a very nice British thing to be happening. Uh, and it has a funny joke where one of the characters gets one wish, and he can wish for his entire family to be better and wish for anything, and so he wishes for no more scrolls, which of course is a riff on the no more actions thing. Yeah. Uh, which is really funny. The best thing about this is it also sets up the entire mission statement for the rest of the series. I know I'm sort of ranting on it a little bit, but it sets it up as in order to defeat the scrolls, they have to release all of the evil magic back into Britain. So the rest of the series is going to be about them trying to take down this evil magic in Britain. Such a great setup. So good. And I thought also, like, just the aspect of hanging all of that on Pete Wisdom, mm -hmm. where he's the guy that sort of releases all of the evil magic and now has to kind of deal with, it, it yeah. seems like it sets it up that he's going to deal with the repercussions of his actions whether the world knows about it or just he knows about it, that if something terrible happens, in a way, he's kind of responsible. Yeah. And that just seems like that's such an interesting thing as a character to have to sort of see that, to see that played out and as that character to have to deal with something like that is really cool. Yeah, it's great. What yeah. do you think about it? I, I mean, I love that. I agree with everything that I said. I, the only little nitpicky thing I had is like, there's this great thing in the beginning where they, pull that Excalibur out of the stone, and save the day with it, and then the guy's like, all right, that was a lot of work. Puts it back in, and was just like, save that for the next time. And then there's like, <laughs> a girl standing in the background, she was like, <laughs> and she pulls it out, and I was like, it's very anticlimactic. Like, he just put it back in. You know? Yeah, well, the rest of the series, every issue says you could put it in a stone and then pull it out. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's what's so great about it. <laughs> uh, anyway, definitely pick it up, and that's it for the stack! Woo! Yeah. 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 This is uh, my favorite section. It's my favorite section because you guys make it up. Is your audience questions? For that, we're going to turn to Replacement Booth Man! Replacement Booth Man! Woo! Replacement Booth Man! We need some copies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Apparently, uh, somebody said I need a copy. <laughs> um, regular booth man has a cod PC and his cod piece will be back next week. Woo! Woo! Uh, first question goes to Tom. There's a wall talking to the <laughs> <laughs> The great power. How would one become an editor? Uh, well, if you're me, you, uh, you get an internship and then you hang around. If you're somebody else, you uh, basically convince or trick the person 
hire you into hiring you. <laughs> typically, typically people don't start as editors, they start as assistant editors or associate editors and kind of work their way up. Um, you know, every once in a while there'll be somebody that has applicable skills from another related field who might come in and like a like talk show or something. Mm -hmm. Actual skills. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, if you want to be a comic book editor, and God, who the hell would want to? Um, you know, a lot of people here would. They 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 think that now. Yeah. After a couple of months, maybe not so much. Um, uh, you need to have a, a, a background in all the bits and pieces of going to uh, putting a comic book together. Uh, in story structure, some understanding of art, some understanding of how uh, the words and the pictures come together to form a perfect union. Um, and but, but really, as much as anything, it's convincing the person that you can do the gig. Cool. Great. Um, do we have stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good point. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> we have gifts for the people who uh, ask Who asked that question? All right. Pick from the gift bag. Uh, while he's doing that, why don't we get the next question? Okay, this one goes to Wyatt. How many kisses of John's ass did it take to get the gig? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm doing research and I need accuracy. How many takes to become a comic book editor? Um, this is um, a job fair, by the way. <laughs> um, no, you know what? It was really, it was one of those weird things. It was really cool to meet John, and I thought I was going to be like really nervous sort of going into it, but he makes you really comfortable. It turns out he's short, so that helps. That's the surprising right. thing. He talks about how short he is. He's like, if he's short, then that means I'm short, because we're like the same height. <laughs> and it's kind of like, he's like, oh, I'm so short. And it's like, man, screw you. <laughs> I don't even think I'm tall. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, when I got the job, it, it was one of those weird things where you, like, I auditioned in Los Angeles, and then I, I didn't think I had gotten the job. I had auditioned for the show a couple times, and so this time around, I was just kind of like, eh, whatever, and, like, my life was kind of in a shitstorm anyway. Like, my car had gotten repoed, and I was about to get evicted, and... So just kind of like, yeah, I'm not gonna get this job. I was, the closet was a step up. Yeah, the closet actually was a big step up. <laughs> it works out that I don't have a car because I didn't need one. Um, but uh, but yeah, so then I got this phone call like on a random day that was like, hey, can you fly out to New York on Thursday? You're gonna meet John. And so I was like, oh, okay. And I definitely initially was like, oh shit, you know, like I should like, hopefully be charming or something and but you you go in the studio and they like you're there you kind of run your thing uh, your audition piece like once or twice before he gets there and he walks in and he's just like hey what's going on and he's just we immediately just started joking around and goofing off and then afterwards like as soon as we finished he was like great when when can you start and I thought he was like, I was like, that's a shitty joke to play on someone. <laughs> that's the worst. And I was just like, that's such, like, if I don't get this job, that's the meanest thing ever. <laughs> and then, like, I was, I was still there, and, he, and people were like, they took me on a little tour, and I'm like, why would somebody give me a tour? <laughs> but, like, I, they haven't given me a job. And, Apparently he had given me the job. I just didn't understand that he was being serious. I thought he was being sarcastic. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't think he had to kiss his ass at all. He's really cool. And that point. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. The one person who congratulates you. <laughs> the rest of you, fuck off. <laughs> no seriously, I love you all. Please watch the show. <laughs> Give that.